I am I'm really, really honored to be here. I'm really honored. Um, I'm a little nervous, which is really funny because I speak all the time. So I'm kind of nervous. And I, and I think the nervousness is excitement because there's this piece in my heart that's like, oh. And when it comes to trauma, it's such a big friggin' topic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it down into the six personal power zones. And that is the holistic coaching methodology at your own university. So we talk about the six zones of personal power, how to reclaim your power and where you have your power. And so the first zone we're gonna talk about today, and we're gonna talk about the body. And oftentimes when um, we did this, I, I've heard, um, well, somebody just posted actually in the group, excuse my cat, he's just like, has to be on me today. Um, but I, I saw a post in the Facebook group and it was all about um, PTSD, depression, and anxiety, right? So yes, that can overflow from body trauma, but that's not how the body processes trauma. Your body has a whole different skill set of processing trauma. And so um, I want to hear from you. I want to open up this discussion. I definitely want this to be a discussion. I blocked out two hours of my day for this live. And um, so we have time, we have space to talk about it. And I'm just going to start at the beginning, and you can jump in any time, and we'll pause. I'll take your questions. We can even go into some coaching, and we'll move through this. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is what I do for a living. This is how I feed my family by offering these gifts. I have a holistic health coaching certification program. Um, Jen's in it. And I train holistic health coaches, so you are, um, you're more than welcome to talk to me about that. I also have a program that I put together that's just around reconnecting and re-empowering you with your body, and it's called Amazing Body, and it's part of my entire holistic coaching um, program that I work privately with people, the Amazing You program. It's my signature system. I've been uh, awarded for it. Um, it's it's a fantastic program and it is the foundation of the holistic health coaching certification. So I'm going to be inviting you into that little piece of it. However, if you feel moved and you're like, dude, this girl's like got it going on. You feel called to work with me. Um, let's talk about going further either through private or if you feel called to do this for a living and you want to step into that, then let's talk about that. So I'm going to give you ways to do to do all that at the end of this. Um, well, because that's another reason why I'm doing this. So um, let's talk about trauma. And let's talk about the body. And let's just open up this conversation. I can't put my arm down because this cat is like absolutely crazy. I do have notes. I usually fly by the seat of my pants, but I do have notes. So the body, um, ways that we get sick. So it's we can get sick from more than just trauma, but there's major ways that we get sick. And one is genetic. Okay, you can have a genetic propensity to to be sick with something. Two is environmental. Say that there's an oil spill, right? That's been big in the news, and it gets into the water stream, and you're walking down, and you have you're drinking that water. That's environmental. Another environmental thing would be. Um, you know, pollution is environmental. Getting a bug is environmental. Say that you, you know, your child sneezes and do sneeze. Oof, the cat, the cat hair on me <laughs> is environmental, right? Um, can cause allergies. For me, an environmental allergen that is deadly is wheat, is gluten. So, um, are you guys all hearing me okay? I just want to check in. So those are two ways that you can, that the body 
can get sick and being sick itself is a trauma. It's a life changing event, especially if you have, um, something that, thank you. Thanks Jen. Um, something that can, um, live on. So ways that we get sick is thanks Lamorla. So thanks Lamorla. I'm going to get it. It's going to come out of my mouth with a name like Lisha Antica, like pronunciation is really important to me. Um, and very hard. So I have a huge heart for, <laughs> for it not working. All right. So genetics, what you get from your parents, your genes. Now with genetics, you can, you can absolutely put together, um, really great habits, but with, you have to have awareness, right? So if you know breast cancer runs in your family, or for me, it was cervical cancer. So I didn't know that cervical can cancer is what um, took my grandmother's life. I didn't realize that. So I didn't realize that I was kind of marked for it. And when my body went through my trauma, what happened was I held that trauma in my body and my weakest link, right, from my genetics, my weakest link broke down. So at 21, I had cervical cancer. And um, a lot of that was because that was my weakest link because of genetics. Because genetically, I was prone to having cancer, right? An ovarian cancer. All right. So um, let's see. People are asking for the link here. So I might pause for just a moment and offer up a link. Maybe, maybe not. I can't really pause because I can't move my mouse. All right. Okay, so um, let's see. The um, the genetics are kind of like the weak link, but if you know about where the genetics are, then then you can walk through your life with eyes wide open, right? You can take the precautions that you need to take. You can get the medical tests that that you you need to take, and um, and that's that's how it works. So I'm going to share this on my timeline. All right. Hopefully, that'll take care of it. Um, and that brings me to the other two things that cause illness. So one is poor habits, bad habits. And a habit is something that you do over and over and over and over again, right? So um, because habits are so important and life-changing and really good habits, and there's so many options for habits, I formed the UMATA Club at your own university, which sends out a daily email of a healthy habit for your body or your mind, any one of your personal power zones, the places that you have power in your life. And, you know, so you can kind of try on different hats, try on different habits and find the ones that work for you. But you're really writing a recipe of habits. If you have a genetic makeup to have um, a cancer of some sort or MS or um, a allergy, right? Like allergies to cats, allergies to food. Then what happens is you can go in that eyes wide open and develop really powerful habits around the prevention or the management of that things, of those things. For me, um, I have celiac disease. So that's one way that is genetic. It is genetic. And also, um, it went to my weakest link, which is like my mind, I guess. Dysphoria, dysfunction, depression. Um, because my, how I handled trauma was very much in my head, not very physical, very much in my head. And so um, my, my body trying to help process it with my it's hard to explain. I have a map in my head that I've drawn through years of self-study, <laughs> but it's hard to explain here. But it all like it. The genetics worked with the trauma, and the genetics was the weakest link. Is basically my point. 
And then there's the environmental pieces. So my gluten allergy, the environmental piece, also was a weakest link to the trauma, right? So the trauma, how I handled the trauma, and we'll get into this in just a second, was emotionally. And, and therefore, that my allergy started affecting me emotionally more than physically, where my mother, I don't think she'd mind me talking about her since I do it often. Um, my mother handles her celiacs physically, very physically, in her guts. Right? So for me, it's, it causes, um, well now it causes anaphylactic shock, but before it caused confusion, massive confusion and depression. And now it, yeah, you know, I haven't eaten it in so many years that I... I just go into anaphylactic shock. Okay, so then there's two other ways, and I mentioned one already. That's poor habits. So poor habits are changeable. You take responsibility for them and you change them. Is this coming? Is are you guys? Well, first let me just ask: Is this all coming out clearly? Do you guys have any questions up to this point about genetics and environment when it comes to? the body reacting in illness. We'll talk about what what the body and illness is too. Is this good? There's some lag there. Okay, perfect, just let me know. I'm just gonna check in every once in a while to make sure that we're all here since I haven't done this before. Oh, cool, cool Jen, cool Tamara, thank you. Okay, so you have body, or you have genetics and you have environment. The other two are poor habits. So the person that goes and eats McDonald's every day or lives off of packaged food and then gets mad at the spoon for being obese uh, or gets mad at the Big Mac, right? It's happened, right? We've heard it in the news. Gets mad at the Big Mac for, um, for causing them to be obese is this is a form of, of poor habits. Now, poor habits can be escalated by environment, right? So environment includes your family. So if your parents had poor habits growing up, it's more than likely unless you really shifted the belief systems and your mindset around it, you, you might have some bad habits now. Um, so bad habits can be environmental. They can be affected by your environment. If you have no food, if you have no money to buy food, it's going to be really hard to have good habits when it comes to food um, and, and eating, right? It's just, just is what it is. I wanted like this messy bun. Sorry, I'm distracted, but and I thought I'd be all like cute and whatever. Okay, so um, so it's all affected. I want you to see that it is a holistic unit when it comes to what can get us sick. So there is, we've gone over genetics, environment, poor habits, okay? Now, genetics I can't help you with or change, although there are meditations and different things. Science is proving now that we can change our RNA and our DNA makeup. And when I was healed from or went into remission from the cancer in my early 20s, I went through a series called NERI, Neural Emotional Reflex Integration and Neural Organization Technique and they reprogrammed my RNA and DNA levels through these touches and chiropractic adjustments back to before I was sick. Pretty friggin' cool. Um, now, what I just realized recently is because they went back to where before I was sick and they didn't reprogram them to a healthy place in me, I still had that genetic makeup, which is why a trauma triggered the same effect two years ago, right? And I had precancerous cells again and had to go through that all thingy bomb. Anyway, that was fixed and resolved, so yay. So that brings us to trauma. Trauma, trauma, trauma. So trauma is like a switch. It's like a trigger switch. And I love, I love, I love this definition of trauma. Um, it is 
the, there's physical traumas like a car accident, a unfortunate trigger warning, rape, a um, beating, um, falling off a horse. Um, that's you know physical. The the trauma happens to the physical body. Um, a physical trauma would be living with chronic illness. That is a physical trauma. When the chronic illness is affecting your physical body, you are living in a state of trauma, right? So how do you recuperate that? Now, we'll get into, especially in a later series, how um, psychological trauma affects the body too and the over like how it all spills over into into one another so this is really really important to just understand that there's a whole bunch to this and this is we're just we're at the tip of the iceberg um, but oftentimes people get confused with physical trauma and um, psychological trauma so I want to talk about both of the traumas okay and the two the two traumas so physical trauma affects you the trauma affects you physically. So whatever traumatic event happened or is happening is affecting you physically. It's a physical happening. It's dense. It's in matter. Now there's psychological trauma and there's spiritual trauma, which I hadn't gotten to yet, but we'll just add it to the list. So there's a physical, psychological, spiritual, right? Three types of trauma. And so the physical trauma happens to you physically. The psychological happens to you psychologically, right? And the spiritual happens to you spiritually. Um, say that you... Now, there's just no easy way to get around this. So say that you were molested by a priest, right? And it's all over the news, it's all thing. There's, ha, ah, right? You're molested by a priest or you're molested by a caregiver that you look at like God. Our first relationships with God are parental, right? They're, they're parental. That's how we define God at first. So if that was a negative or painful relationship, then there's going to be some spiritual trauma happening there, which is a disconnect from that, from um, magic, <laughs> really. It's disconnect from miracles. It's disconnect from th something greater than you. And it's fearing that actually it creates a wall there, a, a very strong, powerful wall. So that's spiritual. Psychological, coming back to it, is the one that's most famous. It's just most famous. So um, people that have psychological stuff that goes on, um, it is like emotional abuse, verbal abuse, um, living um, in and around narcissists will do this. I just had a conversation in a group last night about over like surviving narcissistic relationships. Um, it overwhelms the person psychologically. Now, can you have a trauma that encapsulates it all? Yes. Okay. Um, I believe that rape is one. I believe that um, fighting in wars, from what I've heard, I haven't experienced that myself, but what, what I've heard when you're in combat, it is physical, it is emotional, and it is spiritual. It's life-threatening, right? Spiritual, emotional, and and, and spiritual. So this is really important to, to understand that sometimes the trauma affects it all, all, th or all three, and then you have to deal with all three, and sometimes it doesn't, right? So today we're gonna primarily talk about um, what happens when you go through that trauma, how it interplays with how our bodies get sick and tired and fat and not working, and um, not so much about the psychological trauma or the spiritual trauma. However, know that even if you experienced psychological, you might be affected physically or coping with it physically. So I love this definition of just a traumatic event. It's a traumatic event or situation that creates psychological trauma or physical trauma that overwhelms the individual's ability to cope, 
right? Like, ah, yeah. And it's just like, it can be a split second. When I was 11, I had the most traumatic event of my life up to that point. And it was, um, I mean, I was stuck there. I was stuck at 11 for a couple decades. And it was very traumatic, but the whole event probably took 15 minutes, maybe a half hour, right? At most, um, at, at most, I think. I don't really know. Um, but it wasn't long, it wasn't a whole day. But that event, I it was physical, emotional, and spiritual. And I lost my ability to cope. And it left me feeling like I, I feared death, um, alienation and abandonment, um, mutilation, psychosis happens because we leave our body to cope, right? The soul leaves the body in order to cope with this and it becomes, um, it becomes this overwhelming loss of power, right? Overwhelming loss of power. So the individual may feel emotionally, cognitively, and physically overwhelmed, right? That's trauma. It can, a trauma can be your parents getting a divorce. A trauma can be you getting a divorce. A trauma can be not knowing where your next paycheck is going to come from. Um, that's money trauma, right? I'm diving deep into money trauma right now as I plan and work through the holistic health coaching certification program, um, teaching it. And it's like, oh my God, uh, right? It's like, it is so traumatic. We feel hopeless there. So this is like a scale of like, have I experienced trauma and what is trauma? The circumstances and events um, really in trauma there, um, there's an abuse of power more than likely. Now the abuse and power might be the guy didn't put on his brakes and boom, hit the back of the car, right? Which caused a physical trauma to your back, which causes your whole life to change because you no longer can work, right? In your job, say you have a physically demanding job and you have to change your entire life. So hello, a couple of people just joined. Hi, I wanna welcome you and um, feel free to ask questions um, please let me know that you're here and say say hi. Uh, we're just kind of in the middle of it. What we've done is I've gone over, um, so you want to listen again, but I'll quickly just reiterate real fast. We'll pause any questions that you guys have. So the ways that the body reacts, it, we usually label it as sick. And um, so we can get sick through genetics, environmental, poor habits, and trauma. Those are the four ways. Now I'm defining trauma and we're talking about the powerlessness and the three types of trauma. So there's physical trauma, psychological or emotional trauma, and spiritual trauma. And there's some traumas that affect all of it, right? All of it. And when, when we don't have those coping skills, that is what defines a trauma. So I just said that a trauma is an, an individual's overwhelming ability to cope, okay? an overwhelming ability to cope that leaves a person really in fear. It leaves them powerlessness, power, just feeling not powerful emotionally, cognitively, meaning mentally or physically. All right. So those are our three faculties. Um, now, I want to talk about the body. Because, you know, we hear so much, oh, well, trauma, PTSD, right? And what does that look like? Well, the body is very, very, very specific. And how the body relates and processes trauma is 
is different and how you have to release it and remove it is different than how you would process and release and remove say um, mindset and a mental belief and, and sorting through the memories in the subconscious and the blocked memories in the unconscious which we'll get to in the next phase of the series and mindset is different than emotionally and and learning how to be happy and and discovering your emotionality and and reframing your emotional intelligence which we'll get to in a in another series. It's different than praying and meditation and getting connected to God and forgiveness. Like it's, it's different. Those things won't work when you're working with your body coping with, with trauma. The body needs a whole different set of, of skills. So how do you think, I want to ask you a question, some interaction here. Um, if you have any questions about that or insights about what I just said, because that was a ton of definition, um, put them in there. Give me a thumbs up and let me know that we're on the same page, that you understand. Um, totally feel free to disagree with me here. Um, you know, I am up for discussion. <laughs> right I'm not going to debate anybody I hate debating it's a trauma point for me um, I have nothing to prove but I I know my shit so um, there's that and and then we'll get into how the body processes how the body processes trauma and we're gonna start the conversation through uh, an awareness it's really about an awareness for you, um, power begins to come back to a person through uh, awareness. And um, in the Holistic Health Coaching Certification Program and in my coaching, we really build everything off an awareness. If a memory of a trauma is trapped in the unconscious mind, meaning you cannot recall what happened. Oh, cool, Jen, good. So let me know if if you have any if you have any questions if you want me to go deeper anywhere um, and my question for you guys is how do you think your body is processing trauma or how do you think your clients body or how do you think people's body it doesn't necessarily have to be you um, although I think our greatest teachers are experience and that's where we're gonna gain freedom if you're here for for freedom Okay, so um, where was I? So let's define the body. All right, this will give you a clue clue into it. The vod the body is your densest material, right? You can change your mind and your mindset like boom, we can change it pretty fast. Sometimes we have to dig deep and do some serious work to get into those belief systems. Um, sometimes we have to dig deep to get into the unconscious brain. Sorry, I keep pushing here because that's where it's at. It's a lower brain. Um, but unconscious mind doesn't think. Um, it holds information. It's, it's um, oh, the computer, if I knew it better, I think it's the RAM, like the part that just like holds everything, but you can't pull up the information, or maybe it's the hard drive. It holds everything, but but it doesn't pull up the information. So if a trauma was so big, like mine when I was 11, I have glimpses and know what happened, and I even had to go through a period of my life where I had to prove to myself it happened, right? I, I had to like look at the scars and prove to myself that that happened and I'd go through and I'd be like, oh, it didn't happen. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. Because it was so life stopping. It was so emotionally, cognitively and physically overwhelming for me that I checked out. And then I stuffed the memory in order to cope and just live. I stuffed the memory in my unconscious mind, my, my beyond my subconscious and my unconscious, right? And it runs. It runs the whole program. It runs how I relate. And we'll get into the mindset. I love the mindset, obviously. It's like one of my favorite parts, but it's there, right? So the subconscious mind, we bring it up into that, and then the conscious mind is where you heal those beliefs. But it happens pretty fast. My point here is it happens pretty fast. Now, a physical thing, you know, in all honesty, and like after a lot of work and, um, physical work and creams and ointments and everything like you can barely see my scars right um and by putting in those good habits and everything with my physical body you can barely 
see them, right? My body is processing them. Oh, you hit the nail on the head. So, all of those are how your body processes them. Not anxiety, not depression, and not PTSD. Now, phantom pains is a form of PTSD that the mind creates to relate to the body, but it's still the mind's creating it. But all the rest, Jen, are totally right. Does anybody else have any, any answers? Come on, come on. I agree with Jen, yes. So yeah, the body inflames, right? So why, do, why would you think the body would inflame? Um, it works through the senses. So you're going to hear things like um, ringing in your ears, right? That's a common one. Um, you're gonna hear things, you're gonna feel things. And I mean like, like feel the cup, right? Feel the glass. Not like, I feel in my feelings, that word feel, but like physically you're gonna feel things like physical pain, right? Pain in your joints, inflammation. We pack on things, we build, the body loves us so much it builds a barrier around us, right? It builds a barrier. Weight gain, totally, totally common. The other common is weight loss, where you can't gain any weight at all, right? When you walk somebody through, um, well, cancer patients. I go back to cancer a lot because it's my story, but you, know, you can look at this in, in, in whatever it is, but they get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier, right? So they're, the body also releases and sheds and sheds and sheds to fight that. And then if um, it would be anxiety would be natural for the weight gain because anxiety is a stop to fight right, or a freeze, which would be weight gain, it would be anchoring into the earth. Um, so yeah, so the body gains weight or loses weight to love you, and autoimmune diseases are like the thing. Autoimmune diseases have been traced right back to trauma every time. They're usually not genetic, it just isn't. People are like, I don't know what happened to it. Uh, forms of cancer are autoimmune, um, they are sometimes environmental, like cancer can be environmental as well, but very rarely. Um, I know for me, there was a thing well, where I'm from Boulder, Colorado, and there was a, a power plant down the road. And the power plant was causing quite a few people around it to get cancer, right? Um, it is a, a What are those little things that generate power? Um, Kathy, thanks for joining us, Kathy. Um, yeah, yeah, anxiety, um, that means that you're in, we'll get into that the next series, so definitely stay tuned. But um, so, so the body and anxiety kind of work together. Anxiety gets, um, the body responds to anxiety by either fight, flight, or freeze, right? So that's, that's an autoimmune function, that's an endocrine function, it's a physical function, fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, we relate it to anxiety, but the body's process of it is gaining weight or losing weight. And why it does that is to either f stop and fight, right, or hunker down and hide, right? So freezing, we tend to gain weight. Fighters tend to gain weight, I'm a fighter. And um, then the runners, they're gonna skedat out of there, they're gonna shed the weight and, and release that. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating. I mean, it was, um, I know for many of my clients, Kathy, it's kind of frustrating. People are like, oh, you look so good. And you're like, <laughs> I don't, like, if you had any idea, this is not healthy, right? It's like, err. Um, so, so that's good. And, and so taking care of the body and letting it process like that are, are right on. So let's talk about more ways that the body processes, um, processes trauma. It, um, it processes trauma by, by building a shield. 
It is our shield. Your body is your house. It is your address, really. It's truly, truly your address. And it's like the outside of your house, right? It's not the decorations inside. It's it's not the place that you sleep in your soul. It's it's the outside of your house. And when we compare it to that, um, and it goes through a trauma, you have to rebuild, rebuild that trauma. And sometimes rebuilding it from from the outside is the best thing to do and other times if the trauma wasn't physical right so you're not going to go to physical therapy if the trauma wasn't physical but it still can affect you physically so if you had a trauma that was um, psychological or spiritual in nature meaning the trauma itself wasn't done to your physical body but the trauma was psychologically done to you or physically it can still your body is still going to help process that trauma does that make sense your body is still going to jump on track and and help you because your body is part of the holistic system and in your body you have power so if you've lost power there it's going to it's going to react so autoimmune diseases coming back to that are across the board <coughs> um, they've been just they've been really connected to to trauma and autoimmune diseases are incurable so they say um, they are um, kind of phantom right they don't know where they come from what they do um, and they affect they affect your body right they're definitely definitely physical so autoimmune diseases like um, rheumatoid arthritis Arthritis is a big one. Um, um, now, chronic fatigue, adrenal failure, where it's your your um, anxiety is a feeling, an emotion, an expression. Adrenal failure is how you know that that happened um, in your body. Thyroid, parathyroid stuff is really really common. Um, Okay, Tamara, you can watch the rest later. Thank you so much for joining us. Have fun at work. Um, um, MS, multiple sclerosis, um, fibromyalgia. Oh my goodness, huge, huge fibromyalgia is one. Um, it's usually very early on childhood um, <clears throat> abuse uh, for, for those deeper ones. Um, Crohn's. Okay, Crohn's can be. Um, Crohn's and celiacs are often um, mixed up. Celiac is genetic and environmental, and Crohn's is not. They're like, I don't know, like, he just keeps losing weight, right? So that affects the weight. So these are things that the body creates, and the body's trying to shed the trauma, right? So the first piece I want to build for you is like, well, is this happening to me, and what kind of abuse do I have, or what kind of trauma, how... What kind of trauma do I have? Excuse me. That's your first question to ask yourself. And then is my body like overdoing it? How much of the after effects of the trauma is my body, um, my body processing for me? This is going to kind of give you a scale as we walk through the six personal power zones. You're going to, in relation to trauma, since I'm owning this, oh my God, I like... I just realized, like, anyway, hold on one second while I feel. I am so sorry that I've been sugarcoating this for so long and trying to figure out how to even talk about it. It's so simple. Uh, but I really, like, I've been studying forever. Like, I'm really stoked that I'm here and I'm talking about what I'm supposed to be talking about. Oh, I love it. Okay. I could go on for decades. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, okay, this is my own little, own little celebration happening here. It's real life. Okay, um, so you want to know how much of, want to know like what was the trauma? Was the trauma a physical trauma, or was the trauma a psychological trauma, or was the trauma a spiritual trauma, or did the trauma affect 
all of it or more than one of them? And if so, like write down which one. If you have a memory, now if you don't remember, if it's unconscious, you don't remember it, it affected all of them, I'll tell you that. Um, but it's okay. It's okay if it's locked, it's on lockdown in your unconscious, right? We can bring it into the subconscious realm to help you track those memories, to help you release them. You do not have to relieve them. They do not have to come to the conscious realm. Um, that's just... That angers me. But we don't have you don't have to get trapped there. But there does have to be a a realization and a let go, and that's really important. So we'll get into that in the next series. Okay. So first, so for today, just getting into awareness. First, where did it happen, right? What was the actual trauma, if you remember it? And um, if there was more than one, if there are multiple, um, just kind of think of the over overlying thing. Um, yeah, you can, Kathy. You can. You absolutely can. Yeah. Um, usually some flashbacks come, though, Kathy. Um, so you might have, like, glimpses and memories, but you don't have to dive deep into it and decipher it and figure out why. Um, the biggest block for most survivors is, is why. Trying to answer why for the other person or the other thing or God. Um... If you can get past why, then, then, then it's, I don't want to say fairly easy, it's different for everybody, but, um, but complete healing and restoration is, is possible. Oh, another big one that I want to talk about here that is challenging and a physical reaction, ladies, is no orgasm. And we ain't got time for that. <laughs> like, no way. So that is a way, though, that the body shuts down. It goes in lockdown to protect you, to protect your creative, sensual energy, right? So you don't get any more taken from you if there was trauma in that area. Okay, so step one. Where we know what trauma is, right? It's as overwhelming, it's a situation that was psychological or physical or spiritual that developed an overwhelming sense of powerlessness, right? That's it. It can happen, it can be five seconds, can change a person's life completely. And I believe that five seconds can heal a person's life completely. Um, equal and opposite powers. It's a whole different subject. We'll get into that later in the spiritual zone. So we are, um, like, we know where the, what happened? What was the trauma? Okay, next thing is for healing the body, right? Well, you're a holistic unit. You need all six personal power zones to heal completely or else it will just cycle. And I call it the cycle of abuse because what happens is it feels like your body's abusing you when it's trying to trickle out the trauma because it goes and trickles right it gets sick it can't just it was a the trauma itself was overwhelming okay it was overwhelming to cope with you know what Kathy I hear that so much you are so not alone you are so not alone and I would love to talk to you. Yeah, I've had um, I've I've had a lot of people. Um, yeah, you are not alone, and I know that you know that. But yeah, the VA is just there, and and what they'll probably do is is put you into therapy, which is um a great if you have those memories. It's good to get it out. You need to talk about it and get it out. You can also journal that out, right? Um, it's it's important. That's an important step to. Whoosh, flush it out of the system, get the story out of your head um, if it's there. Now, if it's not there and you blacked out, <clears throat> um, it was too much to cope with, right? The unconscious mind is, is going there, so then you have to work with somebody who can work into the unconscious mind and work with resecuring your soul, and we'll get into that in this series. But... Um, I just want to invite you to set up a session with me and let's just talk about um, 
about it and I'll let you know you know how I feel and and you can decide if if working together would be something that would work work for you um, <coughs> um, how do you know what to do when you don't know what's real anymore like yeah <laughs> yeah so this is part of it this is part of it the body is gonna tell you what's real um, your mind has different elements. Your mind has um, your conscious, unconscious, and subconscious, right? And the subconscious mind um, and the unconscious mind kind of work together and they create this fantasy world, right? Um, creates this fantasy world and the subconscious doesn't know the difference between the unconscious and subconscious. So you def Kathy, you definitely have to watch my next series. Oh my gosh. I keep getting sidetracked into mindset guys. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's a big deal. Um, you're totally normal though. Kathy, it's normal. I, this is, this is how we cope. And then we try to figure out what reality is. And this series is perfect because the body, the body is going to tell you what reality is. The mind's going to give you pictures and tell you stories. And um, um, try to make sense of things. That's what, that's what the subconscious mind does. It tries to pull from your past and or from information out there in your consciousness that's happening right now and, and like make sense of things. And when we go through an experience like that, you just can't make sense of it. Like we can't take responsibility for the other people involved or things involved. Um, and if it's too overwhelming to cope with, and so we stuck it in the unconscious, which doesn't have memory, right? It holds memory, but it's like a lockdown. It's like, it's like a steel trap. Um, then, then the body is going to slowly, slowly release it. And it does that through autoimmune diseases and pain that we can handle. It gives us, you know, God won't give you more than you can handle. Well, your body is God, right? It's an element of God. So um, your body won't give you more than you can handle. It's going to trickle effect it out. And if it builds up over time, um, it gets overwhelming and it turns into a disease. And it's a physical disease. And that's how the body says, I love you. I'm not going to give this to you so much that you're going to die in this moment. Um, I'm going to trickle it out to you. It is a form of PTSD. Um, it's not the popularized form of PTSD, but it's the same concept of trickling, trickling, trickling things out to you, right? Um, now, brave souls can go in, face it on all six levels. Um, the last two are how it affects your life and relatability and manifesting and kind of fun levels. Um, but the four major ones are body, mind, emotion, and spirit, <coughs> and, um, and heal it, right, without having to dive into it, and heal the body. This is where people wake up and all of a sudden they're totally well. We call it a miracle. No, it's like they went in and they faced it finally, and, and they accepted it, and that's what it's really about. It's about this acceptance, not needing to change, fix, or... Um, make sense of it anymore. Just a pure acceptance and loving yourself anyway. And it takes tremendous courage. And that's the bridge that I walk people across. How do you do that? It, it's different for everybody. It's a different story for, for everybody. Okay, so where were we? Somebody tell me where, where I got off on that tangent. Do, do, do. But Kathy, thank you for your questions. I love the interaction. Anybody else too? Go ahead and jump in. Um, okay, so you're on your awareness. You have your, you know, what was the trauma, right? What was the trauma? What did it affect? If you can remember it. Then you have, um, you have the different elements that the trauma is going to affect. Now, you are holistic. So if it's too overwhelming to cope with, then you are going to your body's not just going to cope with it. Your whole being is going to try to cope with it. So psychically and spiritually and mentally and emotionally and physically, you are going to call all of yourself in to cope with it. All right? 
and each piece is going to kind of take pieces of it. It's it's phantasmic how brilliant the the body is and mind. How brilliant we are. The being of a human um, is, is is fantastic. Okay, so um, you have clarity. What happens? and the zones of how it's happening. Now, the question is, how is your body holding it? What's happening in your body? To ask this, to get there, you wanna ask, um, no, physically, know the difference between your physical, mental, and emotional body. So, your physical body is your five senses. So it's what you see, what you hear, what you feel, meaning touch, right? What you can touch, feel, touch, right? And um, not feel emotion. Come here and sense, right? Because when you if you rub your hands together, everybody rub your hands together, and then you feel that energy, pull them apart and push them together. You feel that energy there. That sense, right? That's your sensation, um, and it starts to open into your intuitive body, right? So. Ask yourself, like, where am I leaking out this this trauma in my physical body? Where is my body processing it for me? And remember, it started with unable to cope. So it's already, if you have a glass, right, and this is your body, and it's empty. I wish I had water. Pretend I have water here. And you go through a trauma, you can't hold anymore. So it's already on, I can't cope. So it departmentalizes it into, I'm holding up the sheet as if you can see like little tiny print. It departmentalizes it into the weakest link. Remember I was talking the very, very, very beginning into the weakest link. So into wherever um, your genetics will lead it to, it's going to say, okay, right here we can cope with some pain, right? Right here. We can we can deal, and um, the rest of it will it will all cope. But the rest of it does it doesn't really show up. Does that make sense? Is this making sense? No, we're going a little bit deeper into the conversation. Hey, Rick. So we're going deeper into the conversation. Is this making sense? Um, or or like an environmental thing will start acting up. We'll get more sensitive to whatever you're sensitive to in in your environment physically. Um, and and that can trigger whatever um, disease or or physical response that your body's going to go through. So some of the common physical responses are um, we already went through is um, you know autoimmune diseases. Yeah, Jen, thank you so much, Jen, for responding. I'm like, ah, um, I need feedback, guys, because I'm just going to go on a loop. Um, um, we have, so you, you know, ask yourself like where, you know, where is my body holding this? What am I like? This is not right. That's a really good awareness for you. Like this isn't right. It's not supposed to be that. And then ask that you can go into wisdom or body intelligence. So this is something that, I mean, I could go on forever and ever about. Um, but talking to your dis-ease, talking to your pain, your body has an innate wisdom, a personality, um, and so you can talk to it about, hey, is this, is, are, are you trying to release this trauma, right? Or it might be another trauma and you might not even remember it or it might be something else and you're like, oh, wow, that's what you're trying to tell me. Are you trying to get me, what are you trying to get me aware of? What am I not paying attention to? Oftentimes we say, oh, I need to change my diet, which is important to build that awareness of environment, right? I need to work out more, which is important to build that awareness of environment. But, um, but when trauma is at the base of it, it doesn't matter how much working out and eating, right, you're going to get. Um, you are, who is logged into me? Oh, it must be Rick. Oh, funny. <laughs> like you're the only person that has that. Okay, so um, hi. Um, the 
the trauma, um, you know, it might be something that, that didn't seem traumatic at all, but because of an event that happened earlier on, it's, it's that cup filling up, right? The body has to release. Let's see, is there any questions? Um, we're going to talk more about body wisdom if you get into the course. There is, um, we're going to go really deep into it. I have a really special offer like I promised you guys. Um, I'm doing something I haven't done before. I've wanted to. I actually got it all set up and everything, but I, I wasn't yet speaking to, to you. I wasn't yet speaking to you. And I didn't know how to put it out in all honesty. So I'm going to put in here um, the link to the page to register. Today I'm going to, um, it's $333. I hate when people like make me wait for the, um, the, the time. Anyway, so um, I, I'm going to put it in here, hopefully in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, there I am. I'm talking. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put it here in the chat. This is uh, what I have for you. So this is just on body stuff. So if your body is overwhelmingly like drawing your attention and you um, want to know more about it, then then this is a course for for you. This is a course for you. It is um, really what we're going to dive into is we're going to dive deeper into how to move through and help support your body, release the trauma, therefore the healthy cells, and we're talking cells here, we're talking about your physical cells, will gain health again. You can release the constant focus on, am I thin enough, am I eating right, am I working out enough, am I, you know, body, 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 body stuff. You are going to process the trauma on all levels. You're going to feel relief in every area of, of your life and every place you have power and you'll start understanding the power zones even more in this. But this is just focused on one of them. I'm going to do three uh, group coaching sessions, which means we'll get online. It'll be a private Zoom call and we'll do three group coaching sessions. And I have made it for just $333. Now you're going to get uh, yoga classes to help bring you back to your body. You're going to get workbooks to bring you into clarity and awareness around your body. And then we're going to go deeper into trauma transformation, 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 transformation specifically and do that. If you want to go even deeper than that, um, cause it's, it's a group program, right? It's a group program. It is, going to be, um, it's going to be a group. So if you have a trauma that you've been like facing and up against and wanting to get through, that is where private coaching, um, that's where working with me privately is really, really effective and beautiful. And you can schedule a next step program right there. Um, so yeah, if you want to visit it and you're not like, and you're listening to this afterwards, you can learn more about the amazing you group program. It is on um, AnticaLibby.com, amazing-u. So that's Antica, A-N-T-I-Q-U-A, Libby, L-I-B-B-E-Y, at amazing-body.com. I'm going through like a name overhaul. <laughs> it's been like a couple year process. Back to Lisha, my, my original first name. Um, the trauma had me run from it, and I created Antica, uh, which I love that name, so that's going to be my last name. And um, But Libby was my married name, so that's where I was before. Anyway, so the website is kind of like there, but if you want to get straight to it, it's AnticaLibbyLibbyEY.com at um, forward slash amazing dash body. And that's just this portion, so it's not the the big bill. It's a, it's little, and um, it's really 133 or 1,338 dollar value that you're gonna get because you're gonna get the complete Nourish You workbook and program, which 
helps cleanse your body and sets you up to release this trauma. You're going to get um, videos on yoga and and really understanding the layers of your body so you can start noticing like where you're reacting from and looking at your temple looking at your address in a way wonderful way um, you're gonna be able to melt fat away but also gain weight this has worked both ways because we're resetting um, resetting your endocrine system, resetting that fight, flight, or freeze system, which activates when we go through trauma. It activates to save our life, right? That is a very physical, physical, physical experience, and it, it activates there. And so there's that. And at the very bottom of that particular page, it says, talk to Antica privately. So if you want to talk to me privately, then you can, by all means, just click that button and we'll talk about working together privately in private session. Um, also, if this is something that calls to you and you're like, you know, I, I want to like really dive deep into this and I want to help more people with this and everything, you can talk to me about the holistic health care um, or life coaching certification program. And um, we focus a lot on this trauma because it's my background and it's my expertise. And I am, you know, really passing it on to to build a team of warriors to go out there and end the cycle of abuse that is being held in our bodies and being held in our systems with me. So is there any more questions that you guys have about the training, about speaking with me or working with me privately, or about what all we talked about today and the clarity so you can start um, looking at this power zone, cleaning out this, cleaning out your body and paying attention to it is so important and we can go deeper like I said I left time for Q&A and and to go deeper with with you so I'll just wait because I know there's a lag thank you Lamorla thank you thank you and feel free to share this information I'm ready, I'm ready to get out there. <laughs> oh, and that I'm a trauma transformer. It's <laughs> so funny. It's been, I spent like five years, like not, like I started off right, then I spent like five years doing something um, different. Well, walking through the power zones, really. Walking through each of them and really learning mm. each of them. Yes, so it's like, it, from my experience, good question, Laura. So from my experience, um, it it just adds up. So you have a, um, a power body and a learning style. So this is a soul contract, right, with your life. And this is um, just the best way I know how to explain it. And you're the part of you that's more powerful or thinks it's more powerful um, tends to take charge. So what happens in that area with trauma is it just keeps escalating and escalating and it layers. So if you don't cope and deal with the trauma and find a way to cope with it, because that's what trauma is, right? It's an inability to cope. It's a disbelief that we can cope with it. If we don't find a way to cope with it <coughs> and... Um, and process it, then the body and the mind and the soul and, the, and emotions are going to do that for us. And then what happens in the outside world is more trauma happens to get us to look at that trauma. So it just is like this perpetuating cycle. We attract the abusive relationship again. We attract the car accident. We attract this because our soul and our body is saying, look at the first trauma, look at the first trauma. And that's what perpetuates the cycle of abuse. <clears throat> Does that make sense? And does that answer your question? Hmm. It's like do do do. Waiting, waiting. Um. Well, I hope that does. Yeah, so witnessing a tragedy, um, even reading about it, right? Um, 
if it, especially if it affects you, right, if it hits you in a way that causes emotional reaction and causes a reaction, a physical reaction, like a physical reaction would be like you read something in the paper, or you witness a tragedy and you like want to hurl, right? That's a physical reaction. That's a it affecting you physically. That's a physical response. Um, <coughs> so, so yes, absolutely. And I believe that why we see that or why that happens is for us to then look at whatever happened in our own lives and, and go deeper, heal more, reclaim our power even more, reclaim our identity even more. And, um, so we get these opportunities to be triggered and and witness yeah and the cool thing about witnessing i think well this is this is just my take on it and maybe it's just my life but um when i get to the place where i'm like witnessing things and it's not like right in my face affecting me anymore like i'm not experiencing it but i'm just witnessing it i'm like i know i'm really close to have cleared it all <laughs> I don't know if that gives you a new perspective, but it does me. However, I cleared a, the 11 year old thing and then immediately recreated a trauma that was pretty identical. Yeah, if, if not even worse, because I was an adult. So, yeah, there's different ways. Well, I'm processing more of it, going deeper, going deeper. Um, yeah, so. Is there anything else? Good, Lamorla. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah. Is there any other questions before we jump off? I think it's just you two here. Well, I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I just feel really open and I just want to ground this for myself. Um, this is, this is, it's a great to be talking about trauma and its effects and, and um, ending its cycle. It's really great. And um, I'm happy I've stepped into this. So um, thank you so much for being here. Of course, I hope that you join me in the group calls and everything like that. It is open. Doors are open. And um, our private sessions. And if you want to become a coach, there's that too. So those are the three things I really do. It's all around um, bringing you back together, whole back together. And um, just I believe that we're here to light up the world and we're here to anchor heaven onto earth. And with that comes great responsibility of understanding the walk of humanity. And that's why so much drama and trauma and trauma happens. That's a whole spiritual view, but that's what I believe. Um, <clears throat> so we're here to to end that and break free from that and and claim our divine right here. Anyway, love you and uh, thank you for being you. Thank you for joining me and let me know if you have any questions. You can list them here. Um, tag me in the group or go to my page Antika Lisha C O M. Talk to you soon. Bye.